Hope all is well with you and your family. And today, I'm gonna hopefully raise that curiosity a bit more about why these TV manufacturers are promoting these specs that are completely useless. We talked about 8K, indistinguishable from 4K, and in most respect, a completely useless upgrade. Well, today, we're going to attack wide color gambit and specifically Rec 2020 or BT 2020 or that one spec that every TV reviewer, including myself, has been promoting as, well, this TV is better than that TV because, hey, it gets closer to 100% Rec 2020. Well, guess what? I have been misled. I've done my research and it's time to uncover the truth. So let's start casting rocks in glass houses and share with you what I've discovered on today's Coffee Break. All right, let's start with some background context before I go in there and start throwing rocks at everybody, right? Including myself. Hey, I'm not above this mistake. Remember my QLED is the greatest thing and number one on my list was, it's got a wide color gamut. Well, turns out that's as pointless as 8K TV. And let me tell you why. We'll start with this wide color gamut. So the color gamut is how much color your TV can present, display, right? Since the advent of HD TV, the color volume, the color space that our TVs have been traditionally presenting is Rec 709, right? So that's a certain number of colors. That's what your TV was limited to. But the truth is, Rec 709 did not fully capture all the color that was available. Movie production was actually mastered in, or continues to be mastered in, P3. That's a larger color volume, right? So if you look at this graph, this triangle, you'll see the difference between Rec 709, which is the old school 1080p HD TV that you were accustomed to five years ago. P3 is more color, and that's what you see in the cinema. That's the mastering standard. The color volume that movies use is P3. That's what we call wide color gamut because it's wider than the Rec 709 standard. But today's TVs are trying to shoot for Rec 2020 or BT 2020, right? The 2020 is supposed to be the gold standard. Every TV wants to get to 100% Rec 2020. And as we've spoken to with the NanoSys CEO, it's not possible with today's LCD technology. You have to bring quantum dots to the front of the TV in a quantum dot conversion layer or somehow improve the color filter to get you to that wider color gamut of Rec 2020. So we're not there yet, but we want to be there. And so that's the issue that I have is simply this. You have some great TVs. They're called OLED. And these great TVs have these amazing colors. And I'm thinking, you know, in reviewing my Sony A9G OLED, king of TVs from last year, right? Beautiful colors. And yet, when faced against the Vizio P Quantum X last year, it actually was better looking, but the P Quantum X had greater color volume. And I was thinking, how is this possible that I cannot tell the difference? in the color volume between my awesome Sony A9G, which clearly has less color volume, right? If you look at it, it's P3 color volume is amazing. It hits nearly 100% of the P3 color volume, which is what movies are mastered at. But on the BT space, right? The larger space is far behind. And the Vizio P Quantum X is at least 10% higher. So the P Quantum X on a spec basis is way better, significantly and noticeably better if you measure it on the Rec 2020 color space, right? Wow, I should be able to see this on my content. And then I discovered, and this is the part that bothered me. I assumed that all movies were mastered in Rec 2020. Because I asked myself, wait a minute, isn't this just like the whole 8K versus 4K? What's the point of getting an 8K TV if 
you don't have 8K sources. And so here we are. What's the point of getting Rec 2020 capable TV, like the P Quantum X, which is very capable. As a matter of fact, it is the number one widest gamut, color gamut TV you can buy today, is the P Quantum X. So what's the point of looking at that spec if all your sources are in P3 color gamut? So here's the issue. And this is raising that specter of that 4K versus 8K discussion. The color space that your TV receives from your 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray disc, right? The HDR disc, right? The nice and expensive one. It receives a BT2020 color space container. It sees 2020 worth of color space. The problem is that's just a container. The actual movie that is inside the container is shot or mastered only in P3. So this giant color space that's available to your TV is not used because the movie is mastered in P3, a smaller subset. You're not getting those additional colors. Just like on an 8K TV, if your source is 4K, well, all those additional pixels are wasted reality, right? It's just a 4K upscale to 8K so you can watch it in an 8K container, just like in that test, right? They took a 4K source and upscale it to 8K so that you're getting an 8K container to watch and see if there's a difference. The reality is this is even worse because at least with 4K upscale to 8K, there hopefully is some smoothness happening. But when you take a P3 color gamut mastered movie and you put it to a BT2020 capable TV, you know what happens? It doesn't upscale. Each color that's defined in the source is exactly matched to that color on this TV. You're not adding to the color. You're not smoothening the color, like you're going from 4K to 8K, upscaling, right? Smoothing the jagged edges, whatever. It's an exact match. So you are not getting any more color on your TV than is available in the movie. If the movie is mastered to Rec. 709, guess what? Your TV will only display 709 color space, even though it's capable of a huge color space. And so let's go to the core of my rant now. You're asking, and I know you're asking this. Okay, break it to us. How many movies are mastered in BT 2020, Rec 2020? None. <laughs> uh, just as bad as 8K. Oh, okay, you know what? I know you guys are waiting for me to say no, and then you're gonna have all these corrections. Okay, let me take a step back. There's actually possibly three. The first one is the Batman Lego movie. The second one is the subconscious scene in Inside Out, the Pixar animation. And the third one, and this is debatable, we haven't gotten confirmation. If you guys could confirm, I would appreciate it. But Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2, when shown at Dolby Cinemas, we're talking at the movie theater, it was, I believe, in the BT2020 color space, right? But when it was transferred and mastered to home video, that means the ultra... 4K Blu-ray disc you got, it was reduced to P3. And that is the current position of most movie aficionados. It's not Rec 2020 on the disc. However, some believe that maybe on Voodoo, it may be a larger color space that's still debatable. But at the end of the day, you have a handful, less than a handful of movies. And one of those movies is just a scene in the subconscious scene 
<laughs> I don't know why they did that. Well, I have my theories. We'll talk about that in a second. That's it. No matter how beautiful the movie, Orient Express, you guys know that I love using that for my color comparisons, right? Or The Greatest Showman, more beautiful color. Those were all mastered for home video in P3 and cinema, both theaters and home video, P3 color space. So when our teams and myself included start promoting the QLEDs and these TVs are awesome or the OLEDs are awesome because look how close they get to BT 2020. Look how much closer we're getting to BT 2020. Uh, every day we're shooting to get to guys. What's the point of getting to 100% BT 2020 when movie studios don't bother mastering to it? Now you're saying, wait, Dolby Vision. They're, they keep on saying they're BT 2020. Yes, their container is BT 2020, but the movie houses are choosing not to grade to that color volume, that color space. They're grading in P3. So what's the point? Yes, there's, you're, you're receiving a Dolby Vision uh, format, but you're not getting the full color space. Your color space is still P3. Just like if I gave you an 8K movie, but then the actual content is 4K in an 8K container. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> and that's where we are right now with this wide color gap, the wide gamut color space, wide color gamut, extra wide color gamut, right? Let's look at our tanks. Do you know how they score their TV rankings? Color gamut, oh, wide color gamut. Extra few points, right? The reality is, let's just score to P3 because when I'm doing these reviews myself, I'm watching and I know the Quantum X has a wider color space and yet I can see the difference. Well, it's because my source cannot show the difference. My source only goes to P3 so let's look at Arting's P3 grading. I have ranked the top 15 or so best TVs on a P3 color scale. And guess what? As of 2018, we hit near 100% P3. Basically for the last two years, we're there. That's why the TVs have been looking great. In 2018, we hit 99% P3 color space. So every movie seen on those TVs, when it comes to color, that's why they look great. That's why the Q8FN and the Q9FN were like, wow, the colors are so punchy and so awesome. They hit it in 2018. For 2019 and 2020, they just expanded what the TV is capable of by now shooting for BT 2020 but you're never going to notice that. You will never benefit from that additional expansion of that color space from your TV because the source is the same. And that's why OLED continues to look awesome, no matter the demo material. If you had a demo material that was truly VT 2020, okay, now we're talking. Now that demo material is pushing the TVs to their limits, so let's talk about those limits. Okay, I'm not done ranting. This is the best part. Oh, I'm just getting rolling. Okay, now we're getting into visual anatomy, the biology of your eyes, color acuity. Let's start with what your eyes are sensitive to. You have generally the basic colors, red, green, blue, yellow, okay? Those are the colors that your eyes specifically are sensitive to. And then based on its sensitivity, you have all the other colors in between. We'll start with the least number of color sensors in your eye, which is blue. As a matter of fact, when it, in a bright room, the colors that your eyes are most sensitive to is actually green and then yellow and maybe pink. Oh, and I've listed all the research, by the way, so please read further into it if you need to. And I've posted some more research for you to kind of go on a <laughs> rabbit hole. What else you have to do, right? So at the end of the day, your eyes are very sensitive to green, yellow, right? And some red, 
but it's amazingly pink for whatever reason. But it doesn't have as many sensors for blue. And as a matter of fact, it's only sensitive to blue when it's darker. So ultraviolet type colors, right? Indigo, the darker blues, your eyes become more sensitive as the lights go down. There is one movie that actually takes full advantage of that. And that would be Pan's Labyrinth. It's a dark movie, literally, it's a dark movie. And blue is the underlying theme throughout the movie. In all the dark scenes, there's a lot of blue. So that movie was made to appeal to your eyeballs, basically your visual acuity for blue is heightened in the dark, darker scenes. So that's why that movie looks so great is you get to see the subtle gradations of blue when it's darker. Now in a brighter, brighter room, in a brighter scene, your acuity for blue actually kind of drops because now the acuity for green through the roof, green, yellows, right? And oranges through the roof. So that's why in a brighter scene, the sun and the skin tones and the lush color of grass and trees. Wow, it's really appealing. Okay, so now you guys understand what the biological basis is, which is if you really want to take advantage of your sensitivity to color, greens, right? Subtle shades of green and reds and the vibrant oranges. Okay, so let's compare those three color spaces one more time and I'm going to overlay them so you can see, right? Rec 709 was the old, the old school color space, the smaller one. And then we have P3, right? A little bit larger. And then we have Rec 2020, right? Significantly larger space. But look at where they overlap, first of all. They overlap in the important points. The reds, the blues, the yellows. As a matter of fact, P3 does a great job of covering blues, reds, and yellows. All that BT 2020, all they bring to the table is what? More gradations of green and a little bit of that bluish, light blue, right? Okay. If a movie was to take advantage of this additional color space, what additional color would it have? More shades of green. How many movies do you know take advantage of green? Pan's Labyrinth was shot mostly in blue. They actually used a lot of blue color filters to get this effect. I'm trying to think of some movies here, and one does come to mind. The subconscious scene in, the subconscious scene in, of course, Inside Out has some green. And apparently it is BT 2020. So finally, maybe, I may have some scenes to actually compare the color space between two TVs, one with significantly better color space, which is almost any QLED now, over an OLED. Up to this point, I did not know that. I did not realize that the differences between an OLED and a QLED with significantly better color space is only going to be noticeable in the green. And that's assuming that the movie masters with a green shade that's unique to the BT2020 color space. If it's mastered in P3, it doesn't matter anyway, right? And the only movie that's mastered in 2020 is either the Lego movie or the subconscious scene from Inside Out. So I'm gonna look through the Lego movie and sit through all the scenes, catching all the areas where I believe green would be used or you know, that, that shading area so that I can demonstrate if QLED is using and take advantage of that. But if the movie doesn't take advantage of those additional color spaces, then it still wouldn't matter. Even if it was mastered in 2020, BT 2020, what's the point? If they don't use colors in that scale, that's not shared in P3. Same with Inside Out. And so that comes down to the whole point of this rant. It doesn't matter if your TV can do 85% of BT 2020 when your movies are all mastered in P3. Now you're saying to me, my TV is future-proof. One day, 
when BT2020 is in all the good movies, I'll be ready. Don't hold your breath because if nobody knows about this, consumers, critics, reviewers, if we don't clamor for movies to be mastered and released in BT2020, they're not gonna do it. As a matter of fact, they're arguing against releasing things in 8K. You saw the research? It was put by the Hollywood studios to fight against the trend of wasting their money. If you can't notice the difference between 4K and 8K, why are you wasting my time making me shoot and master in 8K? Same here. If all I'm doing is adding more green to a movie to make it 2020 so you guys can enjoy more greenery and you guys don't even care, I'm not gonna do it. Because folks, what do we care about? Facial expressions. What are facial expressions? Tones of yellow, brown, darker brown, white. You don't want a person with a green face other than Guardians of the Galaxy. So that's full circle, Guardians of the Galaxy. That's probably why it was mastered in the theaters for BT 2020, because you actually had skin tone that would take advantage of these weird colors that falls outside of P3. That genius. But everybody else, if you start giving people green faces, what's it gonna look like? And that's all it is, right? It's just more pallid looking people. So even if the movie studios were to say to you, okay, you know what? Unlike 8K, it costs us nothing to grade it into BT 2020 for your pleasure. But what would they be adding? Well, the grass is suddenly more vibrant. The trees have more shades of green. Even though we are more sensitive to green, you tell me what kind of movie other than nature scenes, so obviously BBC, Planet Earth, they could regrade that in BT 2020. I'm sure it would look amazing. But that gets us back down to the 8K research. Limited content in limited situations, sure, you'll see a difference. But for most movies, Midway, Pearl Harbor, any war movie, right? A lot of explosions, a lot of yellows, a lot of reds, a lot of blues, but that's covered. See, P3 covers most of BT 2020 in the colors that matter to you, the colors that matter to us as a consumer. Skin tones, the sunset, maybe some blues, reds, all covered fine. What it's missing, what P3 is missing is the additional shades of green and maybe light blue. So you'll get probably better skies, but when color space is not relevant, and I'm, I'm gonna have to emphasize this 10 times over, ignore any points when a reviewer says, oh, this TV's got amazing 2020 color space. Yes, it does, and so what? Because every movie that you're streaming at best is P3, and every disc that you're buying at best is P3 unless it's the Lego movie, Batman. <laughs> That's it. Well, tell me, share with me, how many times are you planning to watch the Lego movie on your wide color gamut TV? Until next time, stop the FOMO. <laughs>